It's showtime, folks. Enjoy the show. Hey, good morning there. How are you there, Steve? Uh, hey, Andy, great to hear from you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm still waking up, having a little coffee. Clearing my throat to talk in the microphone this morning. That's what there I'm doing. Go. Okay. Yes. No. <laughs> so. Well, welcome to a Saturday matinee, or as we decided, a Sunday cinema. <laughs> there we go. Because it's still the weekend. Yeah. That, that works it's, for us. It yes. is. We're running a little late. Pete ended up uh, sick, and I was uh, still returning from my vacation, so didn't quite get a chance to uh, record anything yesterday. But here we are, and it sounds like with Pete now traveling probably is going to end up getting posted maybe late Sunday night. So, but Hey, welcome patron listeners. And again, thanks for always supporting us. We really appreciate it. Oh yeah. I, I, I love having this little audience that we get to share things with that. Uh, it's like an exclusive club. It's so much fun. I, I wish we, we <laughs> would sometimes provide things. It's like there's, there's little gold nuggets. We swear it's, it's, it's going to be a fun conversation. <laughs> it, it makes it it makes it worth it there's there's value to your patreon support yes <laughs> we appreciate it Absolutely. we truly truly do and it, i love being able to have these special weekend conversations so you on your trip you were there like uh visiting movie spots out here in the in the southwest so I saw some yes, pictures. We, you, you did the the gump thing out on the road we did yeah. we went we, we started in antelope canyon which is uh I don't know if that's been in film, but if you're familiar with, uh, there's a Britney Spears video that was <laughs> shot in there. That's that's appropriate yeah, for our, a Sunday cinema talking about a Britney Spears sorry. music video. Uh, yes, our, our guide was sure to point that out to us. Right up there is where Britney is standing in her video. <laughs> very funny. Um, and then we went to Monument Valley, which of course is just a, a very historic American uh, a location for a lot of old John Ford westerns all the way up through like back to the future three <laughs> things like that. So it's been oh, yeah. uh, featured in all sorts of films. It's a, it's a, just an amazingly beautiful place. And then we went up into, uh, to Utah and, uh, hung around arches national park and Canyonlands and dead horse point state park and goblin Valley. So we are all over the place. Goblin Valley. They shot, um, that one scene with the rock, rock monster sacrifice from galaxy quest they shot that there oh wow okay yeah see, i didn't they, know uh, about those places yeah yeah they're really amazing places and dead horse point state park um that's uh, a great substitute for the grand canyon uh, because i guess it's more difficult to film at the canyon so they go to dead horse point uh and it's uh it also is just an amazing canyon and uh thelma and louise shot there uh what did he say joe dirt some scenes from um, Westworld. I think he said MacGyver episode one. <laughs> so like the pilot. So it's just, it's a, it's a really interesting place where a lot of stuff is filmed. So, it, I mean, it wasn't intentionally like, let's go look at movie locations, kids. But it was just really um, to see the, to see all the amazing stuff out here. And, uh, and by happenstance, ended up at a lot of places where they filmed a lot of great movies so. so so you so you weren't on an intentional mission so you didn't like let's go find the canyon where aaron ralston got his arm stuck and see if his arm is still there in the in the canyon exactly <laughs> no, right it, it wasn't <laughs> quite like that although we were in that same eight place and uh, <laughs> it was like i wonder which one it was <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just bones now yeah <laughs> a little a little arm hanging yeah. down oh that's horribly gross but uh no it was it was really great um and yeah and i posted tons of pictures you can check it out at uh at soda creek film over on instagram if you want there's just a ridiculous <laughs> plethora that i just couldn't stop from posting so well it's a, it's a beautiful landscape i mean that that's why i think it so many people choose to film there. It's just, it's breathtaking. And it's, it's so different being out there. I've been to arches. I've been to monument Valley and yeah, it's, it's majestic on the screen, but when you get out there, just the vast open, Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's truly a, a place to, to just sit. And I, I love that you spent so much time out there because it really does merit. It's not something to sort of like, uh, you know, the, the Griswold, Hey kids, look, the grand Canyon. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Something you, right. you want to sit and just sort of take it in because it is just yeah amazing, amazing landscape. Yeah, it really is. So 
Uh, but with all that, you know, I really didn't get a chance to watch any movies, which, <laughs> which was fine. I really wasn't there to watch movies. No. But what about you? Did said, you uh, get a chance to I, watch anything? I, I did get a chance to watch Detroit. Oh, it, had, okay. it, it, it had been on my list, and since it's available on, I think it's on on Hulu right now. I was able, it, it been on my list of movies to see last year. Just didn't get out to see it, and wasn't one that I thought had to be seen on the big screen in the theater. And I then I listened to you and Pete, and I I think I fall somewhere in the middle, leaning more towards Pete's side on that one. Oh, I, interesting. I, I did enjoy. It. I don't know that I would put it. As you know, the top amongst Catherine Bigelow's films, as Pete seemed to be leaning toward in his uh his review of it, but I did not have issues with it like you did. So I I, I am still sort of unpacking that film. Uh, but I I I agree that there's there's some problems with story and structure, but I see now sort of the arc that it's taking with you know sort of it, it lack of a main character. Um, but the, uh, the, the singer of the, of the dramatics and sort of, as you see the, uh, consequences of what, you know, sort of what happens to him and the impact that that, you know, event has on his life that he really can't perform anymore. Cause it's like this, you know, extreme fear of, of white people that he has that just is, is crippling for him. And I think that was a piece that I thought sort of humanized the event a little bit to, to show the impact of that. And I, I think there's to me it works it works well there are you know some issues but I I did enjoy it I think a lot more than than you did but didn't love it to the extent that Pete did so that's I think the one thing that I got a chance to see this week yeah thinking about it I mean because I, I know Nick Langdon also sided with Pete on it um, you know I stand alone but I think a lot of it was uh, you know again it felt um, in the end I think because we ended up really following um the 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 singer uh through the story it just ended up feeling like his story and it's called detroit and it's just like you know in a film like this i really want to see um them having a chance to spend more time with more of the people and instead of just the text at the end i'd love to i'd love to kind of you know have more solid through lines with various characters and i thought nick brought up a good point about it being similar to dunkirk in a certain extent as to how they chose to follow these characters and why perhaps it was harder to connect to some of them because it was uh, a, a rather distancing film. You know, you don't really get to know many of them. And, you know, I would love to have had a chance to uh, spend a little more time with, with more of them. Um, like, you know, what did the girls have any effect after the right. fact, you know, yeah. what was their story? Um, and I think that's in the end why I just ended up feeling like it just, uh, it didn't end up working for me. But. Oh no! I'm, I, I'm glad you finally saw it, it though. It's, yeah. I, I, again, regardless, it's a it's a an important moment in American history that I think is is worth uh, um, learning about. Yeah, I, I I hear where you're coming from because there is the challenge of turning a movie like this into sort of a biopic where we're going to just focus on one character and then you have to have that hope that you have a character who has an entertaining arc that an audience can follow along with. And in those cases, you maybe have to do a little bit more fabrication. So your alternative is to sort of take a, a more you know distant stance and look at the event and then find the story within that, which sometimes forces you to focus on different characters at different times to keep the story going. And so I... Yeah, I, I hear you almost asking more. We want Detroit, the cinematic universe. If I want more about all these characters, because <laughs> I, oh, I, boy, that's... I agree. You know, like you, you cast some somebody like Anthony Mackie, and you, you don't get his whole backstory. I mean, it's there, you get it through dialogue, you get bits and pieces, but there, there are so many, there's so much interesting material to to delve into, and I think it's yeah. finding the right balance. So. But it's, it's yeah. definitely one I think is an important film to to see for people, and we can we can talk about that when we get to our list. But before our yes, list, absolutely. we've got uh, we got trailers, and we don't. Yes, we do. We don't have a yes, red band, do. and we don't have an A twenty four, do we? We don't. Wow. Why okay. don't you go first? Since okay. you uh, since you you 
put yours on first. So uh, I put yours up online. Th- yeah. This was my Andy pick because I thought <laughs> I thought per- perhaps I was going to be recording with Pete, and so I thought, okay, let me let me do something that may be a good fill in for Andy. So I picked the Endless, and this is coming April sixth, so just right around the corner. Uh, it's the story of two brothers that return to the cult that they fled from years ago to discover that the group's beliefs may perhaps be more true than they at first suspected. And this one is a real mind bender. Uh, as we in the trailer shows, as they, they get there, weird things are happening. And they apparently left the cult because it was going to be one of these like group suicide things. And they said, we're, we're not doing that. We're getting out of here. But as they come back as just sort of a let's let's visit for a day, see what's going on, because they got a mysterious video from one of the members that sort of drew them back. And now there's the trailer seems to indicate that everything's not quite what it seems. And I am very excited about a mind bending film like this. It's directed and starring Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, who I'm not familiar with. And it's written by Justin Benson. So I don't know who these guys are, but if they make movies like this, I'm all aboard for, for more of this craziness. Cause it looks like they just have tapped into that kind of weird you know, thriller, horror, maybe, I don't know, there's, there could be monsters or there's supernatural things going on, but uh, with a very intellectual approach to it. So that's sort of right up my alley. Yeah, that's exactly why it worked so well for me. It was just such a, um, I, like the trailer, I, I never expected it to go the direction that it went, right? It it was this really fantastic uh, uh creepy look at this this cult and the the reason that it's potentially uh right about the stuff that they're looking at and it, it i found it just so um uh mind bending like you said and it just like it has this this amazing sense of horror of uh you know this mysterious dark creature that may be actually in the dark or the way that the time kind of is reversing or whatever is happening and and i don't really have any sense any clear sense of what's actually happening which i think works for making it a really effective trailer because it gives you hints of what the story is but it doesn't really just flat out say here's the story you know you just get these the bits and pieces and i loved that about uh what they were doing here so um yeah i i've never heard of these guys either but watching this trailer got me super excited especially because it also doesn't look like you know, uh, you know, two guys who are making their first film. It looks like a film made by some people who have a very sure hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, d- definitely. There's everything about it. They they know how to work in this genre, it looks like, because there's always if you're going to take on the supernatural, you know, what can you get away with when you don't have a big budget? It looks like they they really know how to work within those those confines because there's some, just some crazy stuff going on in the sky with birds. There's circles all over the place and clouds. And what I love about the feel of this is it it has that sort of very down to earth, real indie you know film like yeah we go to a location we get a bunch of people and we shoot you know you know it's very character and the you know location specific but they've got enough of the weirdness and the special effects that uh to give it a little bit of that supernatural feel to it it's it's not like it feels so low budget it strikes that middle ground and i love movies that are sort of in that range and it's just you know that it's not all about the budget and they've right. got enough talent to put together what looks like a really solid story and have something that they want to say rather than just let's get some friends together and shoot something. We, they have a clear vision for what they want this to be, which is very exciting. So, yeah, April, April 6th. So right around the corner. Excellent. Well, I went uh, a very different route than uh, <laughs> than yours. Um, I went for a uh, for a comedy film uh, called Furlough. Uh, uh, directed by Lori Collier and written by Barry Strugatz. Um, the reason that I was drawn to this, this is the story of, of an inmate who's granted a, a one week um, furlough out of prison to go visit her dying mother while a, a rookie correction officer um, has to take her on this this journey. The reason that um, I was initially drawn to this is because of Tessa Thompson, who is the lead in this. She's the correction officer who has to... Um, take this uh, this inmate played by Melissa Leo, who's also brilliant, um, to go visit her dying mother. And in the process, um, 
you know, she, her, her dying mother says, whatever you do, stay away from my granddaughter. Um, which puts Melissa Leo in this, in this emotional state because, you know, the grandma doesn't want, uh, her granddaughter knowing all about mom and her terrible, uh, journey in prison and all that. And of course she does and goes, you know, the Tessa Thompson's character goes and, and takes her to go visit her daughter played by Anna Paquin. Um, it's, it, it, and then Whoopi Goldberg plays Tessa Thompson's mother. It's a really great cast of, of, of actors who I really enjoy watching on screen. But Tessa Thompson um, is somebody who I haven't seen in a ton of stuff. But um, starting in, I don't know if it was Creed where I first saw her, or I think she was one of the, uh, um, the smaller characters in one of the earlier Thor movies before having a much bigger part in uh, the most recent one, Thor Ragnarok. I think she's just uh, like mesmerizing on screen. I love watching her in Thor Ragnarok as Valkyrie. I loved seeing her in Creed as Bianca. Um, you know, she also is a singer and she uh, does her singing in Creed. I, I find her just a really mesmerizing person to watch on screen. Um, oh, and she was also in Th- in uh, Selma. And actually, she's in Annihilation, which I, I still haven't had a chance to watch. So I just think she's just a, just this great screen presence. And I love seeing her in more and more projects, especially something like this, which is I think it's pulling some of the comedy that you got out of Thor Ragnarok. And it's giving her a chance to really lead a film and play it. And then seeing her opposite uh, Melissa Leo, who just is always just a, a magnet on screen. I'm just always drawn to her. It's just, it looks like a really interesting story. And um, I, I don't know, I, I, it could be one of those that just falls into complete schmaltz and, and may not work at all. But at least watching the trailer, uh, I was like, you know, it, it looks like a really interesting movie that I could enjoy watching quite a bit. Oh, yeah. You look at this cast, and it's just You've got solid, you know, perform performers here. When you see, I mean, it's funny watching the trailer because it's like Academy Award winner Melissa Leo, Academy <laughs> Award winner Anna Paquin, Academy Award winner Whoopi Goldberg, and Tessa Thompson. And it's like, okay, I can see Tessa Thompson maybe in ten or fifteen years, you know, getting that Oscar because I I think she is really, really interesting. It's it's like she's she's just hit right now, and it's great to see her going from something big like Thor Ragnarok to something smaller like this, which is going to be much more, you know, character based. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with this, you know, writer or, or director, but it's the, just the feel of the film is one of those it starts off as this light comedy of like, oh, okay, it's the, you know, on the road, you know, mismatched buddies and all the, you know, fun things that are going to happen between them. But then when we get, to the, to the granddaughter we get that serious piece to it so yeah i'm excited about that because these are those films where it's i know it's not going to be overly melodramatic that it's not all about that we've got a nice balance to that so a nice character arc you know on the road story is something that you know is perfect for you know for me like a saturday afternoon at home type of film that you put on and just really enjoy and from these you know from this cast i'm just expecting to have a, a great time with this so yeah this is one that uh is perfect you know for like a trailer rewind if uh if it doesn't hit bit hit big because these are these little gems that uh often get just you know there's no room for them in the theater you know they get pushed right, up right. by other things and i think sometimes there's just a great experience to be had from films like this and yeah you definitely need to go see annihilation i i did see that uh i think oh, I weeks ago and definitely need to to check that one out and yeah tessa thompson i yeah i've it's like she came out of nowhere but i'm looking at her right, I, right. i'm looking at her imdb credits and she's been around <laughs> forever going back to i guess uh veronica mars she was on like 20 or so episodes of veronica mars so she's she's been there i think it's just she's finally hit that point where she can she's getting the attention of the right people and i i think i remember her seeing her first probably in creed and westworld was where i first really became aware of her it seems like it was just two big projects right at the same time just put her in the light and she's she's just running with that so i'm, I'm really looking forward to this and, and future projects from her yeah absolutely and this doesn't have a release date yet but it is at least listed right now for sometime in 2018 so okay. i guess we'll just have to see okay all right. Well, I guess it's time. Let's do our lists, buddy. Okay. This 
Pete and I were struggling to find some topic. We came up with something <laughs> I hadn't seen Detroit. So we sort of threw together something that's that's the challenge with these lists of when you've got sort of a, a unique film that you guys are watching as, as part of your series that is based right, on, right. you know, it's the Catherine Bigelow series. So it's not like, oh, there's a theme to that series. So we're sort of like, what what does this thing mean? And it was, how, how did you describe this? Like horrible moments in American history? Is that <laughs> right? Right. Shameful moments shame, in American shame, history. Shameful <laughs> moments in American history. And so it made sense last weekend when we said oh yeah yeah that'll and i thought oh my gosh even though we cast a, a wide net you know it's like okay they're it's really broad there's you know you can go anywhere we're not to a specific decade or a specific genre it made it really hard for me because i'm trying to find shameful moments because we often focus stories on what are the uplifting moments what are the positive things to to sort of look towards the, the the failures and mistakes of a country it, there's not a lot out there at least for me i was i was struggling to to find some things for for my list and ended up with a lot of films that were made fairly recently so that's yeah well and i think that's that's a lot of it right yeah. i mean i don't think um i mean if you if you look at at how american history has been portrayed in cinema largely until probably i don't know maybe the 70s um, I think that it was still using kind of the the old school eye of of looking at the in that certain way. Like if you watch, I think wasn't it uh, Charlton Heston um, in the movie about Andrew Jackson, and you watch that, and it's probably completely um, uh, from Andrew Jackson's point of view, and it's all positive, and and it's this real positive spin on Jackson's life and everything, and it leaves out all the negatives as far as you know the the trauma that he left across uh, the country with the, the slaughters that he did and the native Americans and everything. So uh, I think that it wasn't until we hit kind of that, I, I I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know, but that, that seventies period where it was a, you know, we got that, that great boom of, of uh, kind of the more independent and the, the more unique types of films coming out that um, actually really pushed for, looking back at stuff and perhaps it was vietnam that got people um starting to look at stuff like that and uh and uh how we how we chose to uh view the world and certainly i think it's it's really grown more recently with really how we look at history and finding the right way to tell these stories so but it does make it more challenging trying to yeah. find them uh for these lists okay do you want to kick it off? Go, you you go ahead. You just got back from your big trip. I'm gonna because because okay. I'm gonna I don't want to I don't want to steal anything. I'm gonna give you the opportunity because <laughs> we'll I, I may I may I have had a lot more time to think about this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the honor of going first here. Yeah, I just kind of jumped into this yesterday uh, on as I was driving. I'm like, oh, if we do it Sunday, I can I can record, and uh, so I didn't really have a chance to even put a list together till this morning. So, uh, but really kind of thinking about my particular trip and just uh the the landscapes that we were driving through we saw a lot of of uh, you know we drove through the navajo reservation and just seeing a lot of native american culture i i really kind of specifically put my list together focusing on um, our relationship with native americans and so for my first film i'm actually going very recent with the uh, the uh, Taylor Sheridan film from last year, Wind River, which um, I found to be just an incredible, incredible film that unfortunately largely got uh, the shaft when it came time to the award season recognition because of the unfortunate connection it had to the Weinstein Company, and um, and as soon as the, the the all the drama with Harvey Weinstein broke. Um, this was one of those films that was listed as the one that likely is going to get forgotten because um, because of that connection. And it certainly did. Um, it's a really amazing film, though. And yes, while we do have two white people as the stars of the film, Jeremy Renner and Elizabeth Olsen, it's about this this murder on the Wind River Indian Reservation up in Wyoming of a Native American girl. And um, and they they. Uh, Taylor Sheridan was inspired by these, you know, thousands of actual stories about these assaults and and uh, disappearances of Native American women on reservations 
um, and that largely go uninvestigated because of just where they happen to take place. And it's just this amazing tragedy that I didn't know really was happening. And it just, it breaks my heart when, when that final text comes up at the end of the story and you learn that it's based on all these different stories that, uh, you know, that were similar to this. I mean, it's just heartbreaking. Um, but you know, it, it also just, what I really loved about this film is just the way that it did depict the native American people. Um, you had just an amazing, amazing group of people, uh, Graham green, you had, um, uh, like Gil Birmingham, uh, those two, I think really worked very effectively as, as two of our primary native American characters that I think really brought a lot of the heart and honesty to the story. So um, anyway, that's my first pick, Wind oh, River. Oh, that's a that's a great first pick. It's available streaming on Netflix right now. I just saw that come up. Uh, I saw it. I did get a chance to see it in theaters and was just, yeah, shocked that it did not get more attention because uh, it just deserves... This is a movie that really people need to see. Taylor Sheridan is just on a roll. Solid, you know, writer. He's directing this one. Uh, great performances uh, in this one. Yeah. This is definitely, I, I, my, unfortunately, my list is going to be films people are probably familiar with. I'm glad to see this on your list because it's a film that truly deserves attention that it has not received. Because I, yeah, I'd like to do a Taylor Sheridan series. Oh, I'm going to push people. Oh, that. oh, please, yeah, do that. I, <laughs> I think when I, what did I just see in the theater? Oh, when I saw Annihilation in the theater, I saw a preview for uh, Sicario Two. Soldado. Right, right. So I'm very much looking forward to that because every every Taylor Sheridan film I've seen, I've just really been impressed with that. So, all right. I am going to go to, uh, I, I think I'm going to work through mine chronologically in the time frame in which our story takes place. So I'm going to start off with 2013's uh, 12 Years a Slave, which, uh, mm. you know, best picture director steve mcqueen story of uh, uh you know a black man in america who is abducted into slavery for 12 years uh it's a film probably a lot of people have heard i don't know that everybody got out to see it because it is not again this is tough subject matter to watch and i'm i'm sort of glad we're focusing on on films like this because it's uh they're important stories to to be told and i think this was one that i i did not know a whole lot about going into uh but it's got a, a just an amazing cast uh just a heart-wrenching story and the thought of this happening um in america you know at that time when it is a really rough period uh but it's i think it puts an important perspective on you think something isn't a problem or an issue in the country and you you look behind the scenes and you'll see that yeah there's some dark you know sinister stuff going on so uh yeah 12 years of slave my that's that's a that's a really powerful film to watch and it's a hard film to watch i mean there's just some really just uh heartbreaking things that happen to uh chuatel uh chuatel's character um and just all the all the other people i mean it's it's just a really uh powerful depiction of uh of exactly what was going on in the times of slavery and i mean there's been a lot of films about it but yeah that one really hit home because it's just um i don't know it's just he's a guy who's just living in the north and uh you know he's uh you know just a regular you know, businessman who happens to get abducted and and taken into slavery and it's just it's horrifying that stuff like that uh happened and uh yeah it was a great film so uh good choice all right for my second film this is one that i don't I don't know if that many people talk about. I don't know if it was received that well. Um, uh, you know, I, I'd be very curious to look at it again and see how well it holds up. But I found it to be very powerful at the time. Um, and I, I think it's a really interesting film that's at least worth looking at. Um, it's it's a Michael Apted film from 1992 called Thunderheart. And it's um, uh, uh, Val Kilmer plays a... Uh, uh, a, uh, an FBI agent who is investigating a, um, uh, some deaths of, uh, some other, uh, FBI agents at, uh, um, on this, uh, reservation and, uh, or sorry, it's a, it's a, a political murder, a tribal council member was, was killed and, um, and he's investigating and trying to figure out exactly what happened. Um, and it's, it's a, it it weaves in this really complicated story about um, the the relationship of 
uh, the modern day Native Americans living um, with the government and kind of how um, there's this conspiracy and this cover up and this uh, it all involves this this government sponsored plan to strip mine uranium on the reservation that leads that's the root of the killings and everything. And it's um, it may not be the strongest of films, but it made for a really interesting, compelling story that I was really drawn to. It really kind of, I felt, showed how sometimes on the Native American reservations, the way that they live now, it's almost like a third world country um, right here in the heart of our own country that we don't even realize. And um, it's based on uh, possibly a, a better documentary called Incident at Oglala that um that um apt had also directed and uh, robert redford narrated that is about the death of two fbi agents on a reservation in the 70s and how um there's this uh a native american who was was pinned for the murders but the tribal council says he's innocent and it was again this big con- kind of conspiracy and cover-up and everything um really interesting pair of films that uh, I think are are definitely worth looking at. So that's my second choice. Yeah, I I remember seeing Thunderheart. I think when it first came out on video, uh, sort of in Val Kilmer's heyday there. And yeah, it's, it's, again, yeah, it was it was an all right film. But then when I learned that it was there was also a documentary that Michael Apt directed, I've, I've always meant to get back to that documentary. And this is just a, a reminder for me of yeah, this is a nice little double feature to to put together. Uh, to watch that it's been sort of low on my list and just uh, maybe I'll I'll move that that up a bit because it's uh, I find going back and revisiting films you know after about 20 or so years uh, sometimes with a a, a different perspective I'm a more mature film viewer now so looking forward to you know rediscovering films that maybe I didn't fully appreciate or uh, just learning a little bit more through like this this documentary so yeah though that's a that's a great pick yeah, you're you're Yeah, if you if you check it out, let me know what you think. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm I'm moving now into the 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 mid 20th century with the film that turned the phrase back into the left into a pre-internet meme. I'm talking about 1991's Oliver Stone film JFK, uh, which for me at that point being in college, you know, I having always heard, you know, about you know the conspiracies and uh, for Oliver Stone to take us sort of like on a three-hour journey into the, the the complex you know situation of what was going on in America in the '60s and politics and different groups and organizations was just a really thrilling experience for me into how complicated the world is that there are not always simple answers to everything but that there is uh, I think. You know, in the 60s, we get that sense of there is a, a darker, more sinister side to things going on in America that people are not always working towards, you know, maybe this country's best interest, but maybe more selfish interests at hand or what happens, you know, when things become politically motivated. And it, yes, so that's, you know, for, for me, this is one that when I think about a filmmaker saying, hey, there's something wrong with this country. This was the, the first one that came to my mind because it's something, it was one of the first films that I saw in the theater really tackling this subject matter. That is such a great movie and it's um, so well made too. I, I just find it just a a mesmerizing uh, look at, uh, at, I mean, really how you can craft a film with amazing editing and and just uh, you know d- weaving all the different theories together and everything it was just a fascinating fascinating movie i really um uh yeah that was a, a, a strong one that hit home for me so great choice for my uh number one film i'm going with one that i think some people feel is fairly controversial um it's a film i've always loved and um regardless of the criticism it may have um i think it it stands tall as a really powerful film um, it's Dances with Wolves that Kevin Costner uh, directed and starred in. I know Pete uh, isn't a big fan of old 2 by 4 but I love him, and I love this movie. Um, I felt that they did an incredible job with this film of really creating an authentic world of the Sioux tribe when Lieutenant John J. Dunbar um, goes west and is, is stationed out there and ends up befriending and kind of becoming a part of the Sioux tribe. Um, I, I just felt that it was just a beautifully told story. Um, they they did a lot of it uh, where they spoke in Lakota, 
and um, uh, just created just that world really, really brilliantly. Um, fantastic cast here also. Uh, you know, Graham Greene, uh, Rodney Grant, uh, Floyd Red Crow Westerman, Tantu Cardinal, uh, Jimmy Herman. It was just, a, you know, a great group of Native American um, actors in this um, portraying just, you know, these these amazing tribes people. Yes, I know there's criticism of it being a film about the white savior. Yes, I know there's criticism about portraying the Sioux as heroic while they are the ones that were typically the uh, the more aggressive attacking the Pawnee. Um, but but it still is about this story. And, uh, and I just was, I really connected with it and I felt that they did a great job and showing really, I mean, the reason I picked it is because it depicts really how the white men come in and kind of destroy, uh, just the native American peoples and everything. I mean, you see the slaughter of the Buffalo and then the attack of the white men at the end. And, and that, that great kind of that painful text at the end about how, you know, this is, um, I, I can't remember what it says, like 30 years later or something like that. Um, the, the white men come in and basically, um, you know, that's it. They, they take, they take the land and these guys have to surrender their, their, uh, their, uh, their, their space and, and can ruin their way of life. So I think it's a powerful film. That's my final choice. Dances with wolves. Uh, it's a, a great film. I remember falling in love with it when I saw it in the theater and I, don't think I've ever had an opportunity to see like the extended version because I know there's like the theatrical release, but then I think there was an extended version with, you know, they, they right. cut things down. So that's one that I'd always been curious as to whether those cuts, you know, sort of helped with the, you know, pace of the film, or if it was just a matter of, you know, audiences weren't ready for like, a you know, nearly what, like four hour long. It was four hours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, film. So it's something that I, yeah, I I know Kevin Costner's got like perfect hair throughout it in the because <laughs> it's the early '90s. But now this is a story that um, I re really really enjoyed, and it reminded me a lot of if you haven't seen it, um, Dustin Hoffman and Little Big Man, which is a film mm. that's a, a sort of and a, you know he's a young kid who's you know family is you know heading out west and they're attacked uh by native americans and he's raised uh by a tribe and sort of interesting look at that culture and again does you know a great job of sort of honoring native americans and presenting them in a way of as it, the victims of what has what has happened to them so yeah no dance with wolves great film uh yeah all right so i'm gonna move to a fairly recent event uh i'm talking about 2015's the big short based on michael lewis's book about investors betting against the mortgage market which to me was there was no better film about greed just run amok uh in america and to me it was one of these films that it, it made me laugh and cry at the same time because it's just it was so ridiculous of what uh was allowed to happen in this country that you, you can't believe it's true and you know, as well, I think it has one of the greatest endings, you know, Ryan Gosling is the narrator says, and then, you know, everybody went to jail. No, I'm just, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think there was one guy that was arrested. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, a fantastic look, you know, Michael Lewis's book, uh, is a, is a really easy read, uh, that gets a lot more into some of the, the details and nuances of the numbers and and all of that stuff that's going on so if you've seen and enjoyed the movie i recommend the book if you haven't seen this again another film with a, a huge cast great performances so entertaining but so sad about what you know what had happened that's a fantastic fantastic choice for this uh and really you're you're right going into the kind of the modern kind of just that that fantastic american greed that uh you know it's just it's it's so disappointing to see how how things have taken shape sometimes with this country but that is a great uh, example of it and i think that um for me the moment that <laughs> that always stood out is the moment of margot robbie in the bubble bath uh <laughs> as she's explaining i i can't even remember what it is but that, that was kind of the point so one of the technical uh you know things that that she's explaining about kind of how the how the thing happens kind of whatever the deal is and um it, it was it, it was a perfect example of like 
showing you how, you know, this is, you know, people don't get it, but these guys were able to exploit it. And here, here's a pretty thing to look at. So you can just get glossed over. <laughs> um, just a brilliant example of, of, of why uh, that movie told that story so perfectly. Yeah. So great choice. Oh, thank you. Well, that, that's our list for this week. What are we, what are you guys doing? I think it's a pretty solid list. Yeah. I think it's yeah. a really good list. What, so uh, yeah, what, good stuff. What about, what are you guys doing next? What's the well? We've we're kicking off our uh, vengeance trilogy from oh, uh, wow. Park Park Chan Wook. Okay, so it's a very different direction, and you know, I think that um, I don't know if you've seen Sympathy for Mister Vengeance. No, I ha- I have not seen um, any of these. So I am uh, I am uh, um, part way through it. I'm actually close to the end, and I you know I think that it's probably fair to say maybe we just do our favorite revenge films because there's plenty of those and there's plenty of revenge in this film. <laughs> okay. That's, I think that will well, work. In fact, we could probably do that for all three. I was going to say, you, you're, you're going you're gonna to set it up for a challenge for the, the next parts of that series of what, what to do. But I guess as you sort of delve into that trilogy and, and see what's going on, you may have some other ideas of where to take this, but just revenge films now. Okay. I All think right. it gives us a, a, a wide yeah. swath of films yeah. to choose from. So. Okay, that sounds good so to let's me. Let's do it. I, you know, you know, Pete was sick quotation mark sick because I, I think <laughs> I think the Woody Allen challenge is is a bit much for him. So we'll see about Woody Allen's revenge movies and see what he can right, exactly. he can come up with. On that. Maybe you can find a way to work match point in or something. <laughs> see, now you're giving him an easy out. Don't do that. I know. Well, see, I said it. He can't use oh, it. <laughs> Isn't that the way it That's works? That's the way it works. Take that, Pete. Okay. Oh, man. All right. Excellent. All right, man. Well, again, all of our Patre- Patreon supporters, thank you again so much for supporting us. And uh, we definitely appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I guess until uh, next week, and uh, we'll be back to our Saturday matinees. All right. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks. Great talking to you.